Hello and welcome to the channel. Uh, today we're going to be taking a look at Roomba and if you've watched the other Roomba video on the channel, uh, the one just called Roomba Sage, you'll know that I've had this, well, I've had this slide for about 16 years and well, there's been a, there's been a little bit of misadventure. Um, Roomba's no longer with us. I mean, with us in body, but not quite in electronics. So let's head over to the sofa and see what's gone wrong. So here we are, back on the sofa, or couch if you're American, with my European Sage Green Roomba Robotic Floor Vac. So yeah, this is a robotic vacuum cleaner. It drives around in the living room, sucking up dust, except this one doesn't anymore because, well, uh, misadventure. Misadventure. Um, if you want to know more about this, there is another video on the channel. Um, it will be in the same playlist, so just kind of scrub back and have a look at that. Uh, it is it is a very interesting bit of kit. It is a beautiful bit of kit, and you know you get emotionally attached to these little guys. But, 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 there is a problem with this, and this one no longer works, which is why I've removed the dustbin, I've removed the brushes, and the screws, and that's why springs are hanging out. Because, well, misadventure, and it started, it started with this. This is the iRobot Roomba home base, or as everyone knows it, the dock. It's got a couple of pins here on the bottom, and that charges your battery. It's got a couple of IR emitters and a little lighthouse on top to tell the Roomba where it is and how to drive onto it. It's got a cutout for the Roomba's front wheel. Um, it's also got a little power input. There we go. Yes, and the reason for the, the, the fact that they never sold the generation or never sold the generation to docks in Europe is because they were only available in 110 volts, as far as I know. I may be wrong, but as far as I know, only available in 110. So if you buy one of these, you need a transformer. This is a uh, British 230 volt uh, three pin transformer down to American 110 volts. I'm gonna get the, I'm gonna get the uh, docks power, power brick out. You can go over there and try not to get in the way of everything. There's a lot of stuff all of a sudden. Yep, so the American plug is this weird two-pin plug. This is the first time I've seen one in real life. Um, it's got like a fat short pin and a long skinny pin. And, but um, yeah, if you buy something like this, uh, you need to step down from 230 to 110 in order to make this work. That's one problem, one part of the problem. The other part of the problem is the battery. This is the battery, big old battery. It's got some C-cell batteries in there, uh, industrial C-cells, I think. If you let the battery drain and you try and charge it from basically Dunzo Calrissian, what actually happens is, I'm gonna remove this for a second. What actually happens is your MOSFETs burn out because there's too much delta load on your MOSFETs. Yeah, so on the motherboard, which sits about here in the robot, um, there's a couple of MOSFETs at positions U2 and U4. One's on the front of the motherboard, one's on the back of the motherboard. And the idea is, in fact, I'm going to get U2 and U4. They're over here. Bear with me. Uh, let me do this. That's U2 and U4. Can you see them? They're tiny. Look, here we are. Uh, this one's from the U2 position. And this one's from the U4 position. And what I was going to do is open up Roomba and replace it with a real MOSFET. Uh, using some cables and some bits and pieces, and it was going to be good. I was going to be able to use my, my robot dock. I was going to be able to make Roomba do all the things that it could never do, like suck electricity internally. That didn't happen. That didn't happen for a couple of reasons. Uh, one I didn't know about, and the other one I didn't know about. Oh, no, wait, wait it's the same reason. So let's remove all this stuff here. If you've never opened a Roomba before, I'll just flip you over. Oh, this chum. Well, hopefully everything falling apart. Oh, well that came off. As, oh, that one's still attached. So there's four screws. One, two, three, four uh, for the bumper. And then there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight for the body shell, the, the top of the shell. And if you have one with a handle, there's a ninth screw just here. Um, these three are a pain in the ass to get back in. Uh, these ones are kind of tricky if you don't have a magnetic screwdriver, and these ones are very easy, and the bump is very easy as well. Once you have, once you've taken all the screws out, 
once you've taken all the screws out, whoop, the, uh, the bumper comes off. There is a little block connector here, which connects uh, up here. So you'll need to disconnect that, uh, keep that somewhere safe. Um, that has the electronics for the lighthouse in it, which is this bit here, which uh, allows Roomba to find its dock and avoid uh, the, 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 um, the IR walls. So I'll put your bumper over there. The other bit, oh, I, ha I do actually have to disconnect this, so I'll do that. So the other bit, uh, you need to disconnect the cable with the buttons for the, the top section. And I'll put you over there. It's a bit like C-3PO without any of his stuff on. Um, yeah, so that's a naked Roomba. Uh, right, uh, can I get everything out? Yes, yeah, I can kind of do it. Um, oh, do I want to do this on camera? I'm not entirely sure. So it's these block connectors here. Oh, this is a pain in my butt. I've already taken off the end, uh, end blocks. So there's one that lives here that holds the screw in. Um, and this one lives here. So you have to unscrew these two black plastic pieces. Um, ignore this cable, because this is part of the fix. So what I was going to do is put the MOSFETs in like that, and then uh, in these fan extension cables and just solder them to the board. Because trying to surface mount anything is a pain in the butt. So, um, hmm, hmm, I, I should have, uh, I should have thought about this. So I'm going to need to take this out, which means, oh yeah, these black plastic things, uh, last time, this, these, these uh, interrupt the bumper. These are actually beam breakers. I thought they were micro switches, but no beam breakers. So you push that in and then pull that out. Very, very simple. And the other side is a lot less simple because you've got the uh, motor block in the way um, for the sweeper brush. So you need to kind of ease everything out slightly. And this is gonna be hard to do around the camera. Hmm. Hmm. Should have thought about that. All these blocks at the top. You know, these guys gotta come out. One. Uh, two. Come on. I don't wanna, don't wanna pull the cables out. Uh, three. And uh, one, two, three, four. And five. We've got five there. So one, two, three, four, five. Those those blocks are all out. Um, these are unique blocks. You can't mess up putting them back in. Then you've got to pull the board out a little bit more. Ooh, come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Um, and as soon as you've got the board out, this side should kind of. Ah, there we go. That was easy. So that little black plastic connector goes into the beam breaker. So it pushes down. Uh, push down and then out and then release and it'll sort of slide out sideways. These can go in and out, they're just kind of clipped in. And then the mud board, uh, you might need to give it a bit of a wiggle because um, sometimes, sometimes this little diode here, this little diode here, uh, just makes everything a little bit too tight. Now, there's some wires on the board. So these wires here, and uh, this is U2, this is where U2 used to live. Oh, this is where U2 used to live. Um, this blue cable here, ignore it. That was part of a fix that didn't quite work and I was trying to work out other things. And if we flip the board over, U4 is where these, uh, where this uh, yellow, red and black wire go currently. And again, ignore the blue wire. Um, basically what I was going to do is desolder um, the MOSFETs from U2 and U4 add in these fan extension cables, and then I will be able to plug in the MOSFETs, replacement MOSFETs 220s, I think. Um, so yeah, that was the idea. The MOSFET U4 is surrounded by stuff. Very hard to get out. If it was this guy here, I'd just clip the legs and then just solder straight onto the legs. But no, 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 no. No, that, that was a pain in my butt to get out. This one here, what they don't tell you is the stuff on this side of the board is glued on. And I think the reason they glued it on was because um, they wanted to just send all this through a solder bath once. So anything on this side of the board is, in order to stop it falling off was glued on, or in case of these pieces, these, these two um, beam breakers are in fact screwed in. So what I did is try to desolder 
uh, the MOSFET at U2, position U2. Uh, didn't realise it was glued on, pulled it off the board, ripped all the traces with it, um, and the surface of the board, and I was just like, oh bum, that didn't, that, mmm, mmm. So I was trying to follow where, uh, where the traces ended up and soldered to those contact points. Unfortunately, didn't work. So, um, put it all back together, uh, attach the, attach the new MOSFETs. No, nothing on the, nothing on the, uh, top works so and no buttons were working or anything. However, however, you put it on the dock and it would drive around and I was just like, wait, what? Yeah, it turns out it would just go and drive around for a bit. And I was just like, hmm, okay, I'm not entirely sure about this. Uh, it complained a lot and then eventually just kind of st- stopped working and, and uh, put it back in the dock. It's not getting any electricity. All the buttons aren't working and I don't know anymore. So that's the thing. Oh yeah, just one other thing while we're here. This bit here, the string. This was mentioned in a comment on the other video. There is in fact a piece of string here which runs down to where the motor is. Um, so this bar here, it just stops your brush tray hitting the floor. So the bit that stops the brush tray hitting the floor is literally a piece of string. I did try and fix this by um, f- sort of using the blue wire in order to repair one of the traces and trying to work out where it went through. It kind of goes through the board now. Uh, didn't work. Uh, I can't find another Sage motherboard, another European Sage motherboard. Um, have no idea uh, if I can if I can actually ever get one. I have ordered the American Sage motherboard, which is the 4110 model. I think this is the 5701, but um, otherwise, otherwise, yeah, I'm going to try the 4110 when it gets here. That's about all I can do. But yeah, this is the inside of your Roomba. Well, thank you for joining me. If you like this video, definitely leave a little like, leave a subscribe. And if you do subscribe, click the little bell because that'll give you notifications when videos go live. And um, I'll catch you next time.